Hi, I'm Elle, and today I have with me two DVs. See if you can spot the original. Um, so recently we had talked about model testing, the idea that you can develop a model locally and check it into continuous integration to run some tests. And we had looked at a fairly basic kind of test, which was, does my model run inference in this standardized environment? Um, but that was really just the beginning of what you can do. And recently I read a really cool blog by Jeremy Jordan um, about you know, how we can approach model testing um, and specifically how we can use model testing to really get at how models are performing and understanding um, what kind of rules they're using to make decisions. Um, and so this is called behavioral testing. Um, and I'm gonna go into this a bit deeper today. And I'm also gonna have Jeremy on in an upcoming video to talk more about you know, what would the ideal mob behavioral testing suite look like. Um, but the gist of this is that we're going to take a, a model that's already trained. We're going to check it into continuous integration. And what we're going to do is we have some inputs that we, we already know, um, and we're going to perturb this test set in a very well understood way. Um, specifically, we're going to be introducing some typos to it, and we're going to see how the model performs you know, in response to this perturbation. And so, of course, because this is an ML ops series, we're not gonna be doing this like locally on my computer. We're going to be doing this in a continuous integration system, GitHub Actions. So we're going to make this behavioral test of the model's robustness to typos run automatically when our project code changes. And then it's going to automatically report how the latest version compares to what's on the main branch. And we're going to get metrics and we're going to get some sample outputs from the model. So let's just jump in. All right, welcome to our GitHub repository for this project. Um, so I made it just for this example. And the gist is that we have a data set. And what it is is um, sentences from Yelp reviews of used car dealers in Seattle. So it's going to be perfect for a sentiment classification task. Do people feel negatively or positively about their used car dealer experience? Who knows? Okay, all right, so we've got a data set. Um, I've got a script for making the data set, but we're not gonna have to touch that in this example. That's just for reproducibility purposes. And the script that we're really gonna care about here is run perturbation test. So what this is, um, is a script that's going to load in a pre-trained model. So I'm gonna be using Hugging Face models, um, the Transformers library. So these are actually hosted by them, um, but you could easily substitute you know, a model that you have trained and either you're checking it in, you know, to your cloud storage um, or whichever way that you want to use to port the model to the runner, it's up to you. Um, but for my purposes here, we're going to be using um, these, these models in the Transformers library. The one that I have on the main branch is an Albert model. Um, if you're into NLP, Albert is, a, you know, it's a, one way of making the great and mighty BERT model a little smaller, a little more palatable for, uh, you know, deployment and production use cases where we might not want to have an absolutely gigantic model. Um, so we have Albert. And what I'm going to be doing is perturbing my data, my input data. So we're going to take sentences from our test set and we're going to insert typos in them using this library um, NLP AUG that's going to try to insert some realistic typos. Um, and so what we're going to do is check, does our sentence get the same sentiment analysis like rating as positive or negative um, if there's a typo in it? So in theory, if a sentence is you know quite negative, if we add a random typo, on average, it shouldn't have much of an effect on, you know, if we rate the typoed version as, you know, as also being negative. If it switches classes because we inserted a typo, that can suggest that there's some sensitivity to features that are not really that important and maybe don't conform to our intuition about how this classification task should be working. So essentially, we're going to be assessing the robustness of the classifier um, to some typos. And you know we're going to be checking that this this particular metric, the robustness, doesn't degrade over you know when we try out a new model. And so what I'm going to be doing is checking all of the examples in my test data set. So these are all examples that were not used for training of sentences, and we're going to check how inserting random typos will you know affect how they're 
classified by our model. Um, and we're going to find out what percent of them are incorrectly labeled once we've inserted a typo um, or just differently labeled. That's really what I mean, differently labeled, um, because we don't have ground truth labels for them. And we're also going to print out our most confidently wrong <laughs> examples. So examples where inserting a typo changed the class that the classifier assigned, and it was very confident about the resulting class. Um, so we're going to print those out. And so the outputs of this test here um, is going to be a list of failure modes. So it's a table full of, of failure cases. Um, and we're also going to print out some test scores. Um, so accuracy, so what percent of, um, of sentences in the test set were resilient to this perturbation. Um, and then I have a measure of error, which is essentially a distance on the probability scores. Um, I'm not sure that it's rigorously the best way to assess that, but uh, we'll leave that question for another day. So if this is really what I care about, right? So we've got this test.json that is printed out um, and we have a failure modes, which is gonna print out a table um, and that's what's on the main branch. So now what I'm going to do is create a new branch of this project and we're going to experiment with trying a different model on it. And we're gonna run the test and we wanna be able to report how our, you know, how this alternative model works in comparison to what is on the main branch, right? So that's what we care about. So um, I've written us a workflow file using GitHub Actions. Um, and if you need a refresher on this, then I would recommend checking out the previous video about model testing with GitHub Actions. Um, and so my file is called test.yaml. It's in our, our special, always look for GitHub Actions here. And what it does is it's gonna pull the CML Docker container. So it gets CML functions and some associated nice things to have, like Python. Um, and I'm calling this the perturbation test. Our trigger is push, um, so that will run the workflow. And what happens is that we're going to do pip install requirements, so get all the requirements needed to run this Python script here. Um, so run our perturbation test. And then I've got some functions for reporting the diff. So I'm going to print out um, just a header into my markdown report. So we're creating a markdown report. This is going to be reported to GitHub, and we'll see it in our pull request. It's going to be beautiful. Um, I'm going to do this git fetch prune to make sure that we have the git history. So this enables us to do a comparison with what's on the main branch. Um, and I'm using DVC metrics diff. So DVC comes with the CML Docker container. Um, and so actually in a previous video to do a DVC metrics diff, you needed to create a DVC pipeline. But um, since that video, we've, we've realized we'd really like to be able to do DVC metric diffs uh, without pipelines, just on any file that exists on, you know, over several Git commits. If the file has a Git history, we want to be able to do a metrics diff on it, um, as long as it's of, you know, a, a format that's amenable to a metrics diff, which is JSON, CSV, a couple others. Um, and so what we're going to be doing is doing DVC metrics diff on the target is test score.json, right? So that's one of the outputs of this of this function here. We're specifying print it in markdown format um, and then put it in the report. So we're comparing how this file test score.json looks at this on the current workspace compared to what's been committed on main. And then we're going to print out the failure mode. So we're just going to put in a header and then I'm going to copy the contents of failure modes.txt, just dump them out into report.md and they're already marked down formatted is, is just in the Python script that generated it up here. That's the Python script that makes failure modes.txt. All right. And then we will ship the whole thing and that's pretty much the workflow. All right. So that's what's going to happen every time we make a push. So let's Let's make a branch and make a push. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is change this here. So I'm going to edit this file. Um, and what I have is I've identified another model that I want to test. Um, and you know, normally you might want to be using models that are um, on your local machine or on you know your organization's resources, like it might be in an S3 bucket. And so you would substitute here, you know, pulling from whatever resource you like. But I happen to like this as as a nice way to show off grabbing models from cloud storage because that's actually what it's doing. 
thing, um, just wrapped up pretty nicely. So um, Hugging Face has a browser and you can pick like, here's one I found, um, Distilbert, which is another tiny, tiny Bert. Um, it's just shrunk in, in a different approach than Albert. Um, and it's been trained on doing a, uh, you know, the same kind of text sentiment analysis task. So we're basically just going to copy this and using these functions in the transformers library. Um, and I, I copied it earlier. So we're going to replace the Albert model with our new model. So we're going to be switching that out. And that's the only thing I'm going to switch. And we want to run the perturbation test. So let's create a new branch. And I am going to call this Baby Bert because that's a great name. And it's just, I just love Bert. Okay, propose changes. I'm going to make a comment switch Albert for distill Bert and create the pull request. All right, and now we wait for it to run. And <laughs> this one is really going to take a minute um, because of I'm just using the GitHub Actions default runner that comes with the CPU um, and Transformers models, you might know, even, even the little ones, they're not that fast. I mean, we're, it's pretty good compared to Big Bert, but you know, it, it takes a minute. Um, so we're just gonna sit tight, hang on, and wait for this job to run. All right, it's here. Um, so let's do a refresh and with any luck, oh, lovely, here it is. Okay, all right, so we've got our, our scores. So accuracy, uh, pretty small change in accuracy. So I don't think we have any real reason to fear that regression, you know, is going to set in with, with Distilbert. Um, and so here's some of our failure modes printed out. Um, we've got, this such an inspiring car when perturbed the model switched and uh, is no longer confident but I think that's a fairly understandable error <laughs> um, let's see I test drove it it ran good I test drove it it ran booed yep that would definitely confuse me um, let's see so, I mean, a lot of these errors look quite reasonable when the model is confident, which I think bodes well that we're not seeing anything, you know, absolutely like, how could that happen? Um, let's see. This one I find a little surprising. I might, I might do some more research into this because of it looks like all that's been perturbed is the word about to zebout. So that's a little weird. Um, but now we know. So these would be things then that we, we might investigate a little bit further if we found these particularly suspicious. But that's kind of, you know, that's the gist. That's the tutorial. Um, we're fine with this in practice land here. So that's the project. So you can switch it out for whatever kind of model you like and check for regression. You could add some more tests. You could add, you know, you could start printing out what was the speed to do inference. Um, you could come up with some, some more tests, you know, try swapping out, um, you know, words inside the reviews instead of introducing typos. Um, the NLP AUG library lets you do that pretty easily. Um, and there's lots more kinds of, of tests that you could do, these behavioral tests. So this is really just a sample of how you can go about doing this and have it all appear in your pull request for everybody on your team to inspect. DV and DV and I, thank you for watching this video and as always the MLOps video series. Um, if you're running behavioral tests, I'd love to hear about it. What kind of tests are you running? Um, and if you like this topic, we're going to have Jeremy Jordan on soon for an interview to talk more about what would the ideal test suite and software look like for this. We love when you're in touch, so uh, leave a comment, let us know what you're working on, what's interesting, and what you'd like to see covered in videos, and we'll try to respond. Um, like, subscribe, and share, and as always, it's great to see you, so have a good one.